Hey Froggy friends, Kyo Style here, welcome back to Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. In the last video, we went through Noelle's story mode, and today it's Rachel's turn, so let's have a look at her in training mode first. Please select your character. Rachel Alucard. Rachel Alucard. So Rachel's theme music is called Queen of Rose, and I like her battle theme. It's nice and elegant, but also intense. And she has a cool battle theme against Ragna as well. And I really like Rachel. Again, she's a character that I, I came into the series not expecting her to be, like, one of my standout favorites. Yeah, it's funny how pervasive the name Alucard is becoming. Okay, so this is Rachel, and so she is, like, a tricky, advanced character that is focused on basically zoning and traps. She's not very good close up, but her traps are good, and if you can get some really nutty setups with her, she's hard to use, but apparently she's like top tier in Calamity Trigger. However, they nerfed her in the second game, but then they later made her mid-tier again by the time the, the iterations of the second game came out and then the third game. I really like her because of her personality, and she has some really fun animations, because she has like her two familiars, uh, Nago, the umbrella thing here, the cat thing, and Gi, the little floating chubby double dude with a little belly button. So, Rachel's special ability is called Sylphid, and you can see in the top left corner, underneath her portrait, there's a little rose with four bars, and basically what Sylphid does is you can control the wind. So I can press Sylphid, and it uses up one of those bars, and you'll see everything on the field kind of shifted, right? Rachel and her opponent both shifted, and I can shift them back. And you can also shift up, which gives her a lot of height, or you can shift down as well. Now, you might be wondering, okay, well what's the use in controlling the wind? Is because a lot of her traps move with the wind, so you can control where they appear and where they move to using the wind. And that's why she's really strategic and kind of hard to use. So I'll start by showing off her regular moves and then we'll show off some of her other ones. Also, you can see like she walks forward with her umbrella. She like floats backwards. Her, when she crouches, she like sits on Nago like a little couch. And if you crouch for too long, she like falls asleep. Because she's supposed to be like a super powerful being, right? So. The, the implication is she's not taking the battle seriously, so whenever she gets damaged, she guards with Nago and it looks like he's taking the damage. And if you knock her down, it looks like she's just resting or lounging on Nago as well. So I think that's really cool in Blaze Blue. There's a lot of characters that are canonically very powerful, so they really bring it across in their animations to make it feel like when you're fighting them, they're just toying around or you're not... Even if you beat them, you don't actually beat them because, like, within the... Like, canon of the plot, it wouldn't be feasible to do that with that character that you're playing. Uh, okay, so let's look at her attack. So again, her close range moves aren't super great. So we have... So she whacks you with, like, the... The, the butt end of her umbrella. This one's actually kind of fun. It's a good overhead. In later, in later games, they give her more animations, and there's more animations where Nago turns, like, really muscular. But this is just one of them in this game. And then this is her low light attack. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. And then Ariel. You can see Nago turning into like a balloon. Uh, medium attack. <laughs> I like how you can see Nago licking his lips in this one for no reason. Nago seems to talk more when you hit people with her little wing things that are around her waist. Now. And then you have your heavy attack. This one's a fun one too because... So if I go... It only hits a couple times, but if I, if I use Sylphid, if I use Wind at the same time... It gives it a lot of extra hits, which is kind of cool. Oh, 
Oh, this one's fun too. Nago turns into like an electric chair. And so Rachel's one of the few characters that can electrocute people. Uh, I think there's some characters that can elect- yeah, there's characters later that can electrocute. I think in Calamity Trigger she's the only one. But every character has a unique skeleton when you electrocute them. So, uh, for example, when you electrocute Tao, you see that she's actually holding two fish underneath her sleeves. Uh, so you get little jokes like that. Now, the thing is, if you electrocute Arakune, he doesn't have a silhouette at all. He's just like an empty bag of bugs or something, I guess. Uh, if you electrocute another Rachel, you'll see she doesn't get electrocuted at all. It's only Nago that gets electrocuted. Which is kind of neat. Again, it shows that she's like, I guess, lightning proof, I guess is the implication. I can't really see that animation too well, but... She has a, she has a grab. She just kind of slaps you. So you can see, like, when she lands on the ground like that, I love it. See, so yeah, I'll, I'll electrocute her again. She lands on the ground, and then she... lounges on top of Nago, and then she just snaps her fingers, and he goes right back to where he was before. Or if you- if I- if she lands on her front, she does this. Oh no, that's- Can I make you land on your front- on your back? Oh there, see? She's like sleeping. Yeah, Nago is the best tank, obviously. Um, she's got some other moves too, like uh, this one. This one's kinda cool. And then... Uh, this one? Okay, and then let's look at her, her special. So again, Sylphide will move things around. So if I go... So this is her... She just throws a little... They're called Tiny Lobelias. And I think you could have like three lightning rods at a time on the field. If I do it with, uh, with medium attack, she sh shoots them as a cannonball. So it goes a little bit further. If I do it with a heavy attack goes a lot further. So depending on whether you do a light, medium, or heavy version of this attack, you get different distances. And then if you press uh, down, down, A, she electrocutes them. So basically you could trap the opponent by having lightning rods everywhere and then use them unexpectedly or force them to guard when you want to like hit them with something else right after. Uh, so besides that we have also George the 13th. My favorite little froggo dude, he just kind of jumps forward and then when he gets close to the enemy he electrocutes them. He's really OP in this game. I think they nerfed him in the later games. If you... If you do this move, she'll throw out a little pumpkin dude. And then you can use Sylphie to like, make them move. So I can... So I can make him go... all over the place. Um... What else? Oh yeah, she has a lot of like mid-air attacks too. So if I go mid-air, I have uh... And then if I if I go in the air and I hold down heavy attack, she turns Nago into a little swing set. And then you can also still feed yourself higher in the air to delay your fall. It doesn't really serve a purpose other than I guess if you want to change the timing of your fall to like avoid an attack or something like that. The Silphy work on, work on all her projectiles? Pretty much. Uh, yeah, they pretty much do. And then, oh yeah, she also has this one in midair. Oops. Gi turns into a- I think this is one of the few attacks where Gi attacks. He turns into like a spinning top. And then... What else is there? I think that's mostly it. And then of course you have your two distortion drives. Uh, this one... That one also electrocutes all her lightning rods on the field, so if you have extra lightning rods, then... Those ones electrocute as well. So if I do this... 
Those ones get electrocuted as well. She has a second distortion drive. Uh, this one. Oops, if I can get it working. Oh, come on. Oops, no, I didn't mean to do that. Oops, now I'm controlling the CPU. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, how do I do this? No, that's bottom, bottom, Lily. I want... Oh, I want to show off the other one. Please, Rachel. This one's hard enough. How do I do this? Let's look at her command list again. Oh, she doesn't have her other one in this game. I forgot, that's one they added in another game. She has another distortion drive, but it's not in this game. Oh, I like that one too. Okay, let's show her instant kill move. Oh, look at her animation when she gets hit. She just floats up with her umbrella. So there you have it, Rachel. Uh, again, I love her playstyle, she's really fun. But I'm not that good at her because she's not good at melee combat, and I much prefer, like, melee combat instead. So, we'll see. When I play, when I play Rachel, although I like her, certain CPUs give me a lot of trouble, and even when they're on low difficulty, sometimes they can get the upper hand. Hey, welcome back, Psycho Reaper. Now, unlike Noelle, Rachel's story is a lot more straightforward. It's just, you make different choices, and the different choices give you different outcomes, which is easy. I, I like that. I think only, like, Ragna, Jin, and Noelle actually have, like, conditions like that to get further in story. Mostly everyone else is just from your decisions. Okay, let's have a look at Rachel. Rachel's Stories. Bystander. Moonlight shines gently on the courtyard. The air is heavy with the scent of roses and black tea. The wind gently caresses the leaves, and I can vaguely hear the almost systematic breaths of people sleeping. A dreadfully normal day has begun. The routine has started once again. It's nice and peaceful. But still. I'm bored. Do you feel tired, madam? No, not really. I do hope that is the truth. Thank you. Today's tea is exquisite. You are too kind, madam. Today's tea has been imported from Amaruga. I thought perhaps you would appreciate its rich aroma. I see. I do detect a subtle difference in flavor. I love her voice, too. Her English voice is really good. What the deuce? Madam Rachel, is something amiss? She reminds you of Lily from Tekken. Yeah, yeah, in a way. Other than being a... An ancient, powerful vampire, but yeah, like the rich girl kind of feel, right? Uh, n no, I'm fine. My nerves, you see. Like again, Rachel's an example of a character that, like, I completely fell for just purely based on how well they did her personality. Like, her aesthetic, her, like, appearance, her, like, concept of being a vampire little girl, none of that appealed to me. And then the second she started speaking and interacting with characters, I was like... I like her a lot. <laughs> if you wish to rest, I will see to it that the bedchamber is made ready for you straight away. I appreciate the concern, Valkenhayn, but all that I require is more tea. Of course, madam. I shall prepare a second pot post-haste. And again, it even helps when the gameplay of the game really plays into how powerful she is too, just by her, all her animations and stuff. I also thought I'd be annoyed by her having two familiars, Nago and Gi. I'm like... It's enough to have one of them, but to have two of them? But they grew on me as well. Hmm. I look up at the sky, at the moon shining like a lustrous pearl in the heavens, surrounded by its retinue of shimmering stars. But it is one of those stars that interests me, not their, lo not their lord, the moon. A star of ill omen. A star that shines its brightest when the earth is on the brink of destruction. As I look at that star, I realize it has moved, but only ever so slightly. The stars. I know what it means. I know that once again, the time has come. I know that once again, 
that terrible thing will make its debut. I know that once again, the world is about to end. I stand and delicately prod Nago and Gi with my foot. Ow! Ow! That'll hurt, princess! Do you do anything but sleep? Come, we're going out. C going out? But we just got back! We usually get some time to relax before we have to go out again. Rich characters with butlers that look defenseless can actually kick butt is always nice. Yeah, I love that trope. I don't know, I just love it. The situation has changed. Get ready. Now. I'm not sure what you're talking about, but... The time has come for us to act, right? Oh my goodness. I am not sure myself, but that is what I intend to find out. <laughs> It has been a while since I felt this kind of excitement. Your tea, madam. Uh, gone already? They grow up so fast. Falkenhayn seems pretty cool, too. A shame this tea shall go to waste. Ah, oh, well, a good house is a tidy house. Hmm? Long time no see, old man. You have changed little, I see. No sense of propriety whatsoever. A man such as you is not welcome in a place such as this. I would humbly request that you leave. Immediately. Hey now, don't be so cold. Don't we go way back? I've had to spend hours surrounded by the stars of these flowers because I don't want to see that damn vampire I'm terribly sorry perhaps you did not hear me I believe I asked you to leave <laughs> <laughs> just forget it man there's no use you should know that yeah Valkenheim's got some teeth don't tell me you're going senile Oh, did I hit a nerve? <laughs> You're mad at me for telling the truth? <laughs> what kind of logic is that? This voice actor must have had a lot of fun. Hmm. Oh, you want to keep going? Just when I thought you had calmed down, you start cleaning. As square as always. Eh? Enough! What do you want? Nothing really. I was just wondering if you realized yet. What on earth are you talking about? The stars are moving. P Poppycock! To Poppycock! I hope your precious little lady is all right. Well. That's all I really wanted to say. See you around. Oh dear. Perhaps old age is getting the better of me. I did not notice. I am on my way, Madam Rachel. I pray for your safety. How barren. How did we end up here? I guess even you can make some mistakes, Princess. <laughs> uh -oh. Princess? Someone's coming! I have eyes, Ski. Now shut your ugly mouth before I remove it from your face. We meet again, child. <gasps> Hello there, child. How do you do? Are you a witch? You came out of nowhere. I beg your pardon? Clearly, those ostentatious eyeglasses do your eyes no good. Perhaps they would serve you better forcibly inserted into your mouth. What do you think, sis? About this person? <sighs> uh, sis? What's the matter? Milady, the guy's talking to a puppet. I think we should keep on walking. Still depending on your sister at your age. How pitifully sad. How dreadfully irritating. Dangerous? You're saying that person is dangerous? Who in the world are you? This has never happened before. Sis is reacting to someone other than myself. Have you ever heard of the word manners? 
Inquiring about a lady's nature is not only rude, it is the very height of impropriety. You're dangerous. I'm not really sure why, but you're a dangerous individual. My sister said so. Okay, here we go. Beating up a child. The will of fate is but I too am a child, so therefore it's just bullying. <laughs> I'm just bullying him. Don't underestimate. Don't come near me. George, that's okay. Ah. Oh, there. Sis. An after battle shock. George the Thirteenth finishing him off. Ha! You mean you thought you stood a chance against the princess? What should we do with this boy, milady? Let's see. Okay, so uh, to get the true ending, we have to leave him alone. I would rather leave him, that he may live to regret his actions. The princess letting someone go? Thank you to Kiro for introducing this game. You're loving Rachel so much already, even from the last stream. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad more people could find out about Blaze Blue. It's it's a real gem. It's a real gem. It's just a shame the fandom's not as big as it used to be. You have no idea how lucky you are. I shall see you around, child. Good day. Hmm? Oh dear. It would seem I have arrived too late. Madam Rachel is still on the move. I'm terribly sorry. You are... It has been some time. I take it this young gentleman is your new master? Having a master is rather difficult, wouldn't you agree? Here, allow me to... As cautious as ever, I see. But I am no longer your enemy. Do not concern yourself. All that matters is that we can understand one another. Let me see. Ah, I believe there's a rather skilled doctor in Orient Town. I believe that will be my next stop. Would you care to join me? Falcon High and talking to a puppet for all eternity. <laughs> Damn it. Who are you? Noel Vermillion. Are you. Major Kisaragi! Please, hang in there. I'm calling a doctor right now. Why did the Major attack me? He seemed really disoriented. What should I. Oh, awake already, are you? Huh? Uh, are you talking to me? I see no one else here. Sh she's scary. Shh, I've heard women can fight with just their eyes. I don't like your eyes. Uh huh? Don't you think it's rather pathetic to rely on those things? W what are you talking about? Those little toys you insist on carrying with you. Can't even talk without it, can you? Th that's because... Oh, for goodness sake, child, make up your mind. Your behavior sickens me, although I can't say I expected much. What, what do you know about me? <sighs> what do I know about you? So you really want to know. Okay, I shall indulge you. Everything. <laughs> Enough of this. I have not come here to experience your lamentable attempts at conversation. 
I am here to determine if you possess the power to change this world. Yeah, Rachel's like, your behavior sickens me, and Noelle's like, I haven't done anything yet. Is turning. Rebel, Poor Noelle. Hey, Get her, George. George is also great because if he if the enemy jumps over him, he will correct his course. So that sometimes he can sneak up behind people. I believe I will be taking those toys of yours now. The thing with George though is that the enemies can hit him, and if they hit Rachel, he also despawns, so you kinda gotta be careful with him. Let's just keep bullying Noelle. No. <laughs> Poor Noelle. Why do you have to be so mean to me? Why? Is that all you can do? How disappointing. Without your toys, you're nothing more than a hysterical child. To think I thought you might change the world. Nago, Guy, let us depart. Alrighty! I like how Rachel just appears, causes trouble, and then just pieces out. Hmm. Oh great, Hakuman. I love fighting Hakuman as Rachel. I'm so good at that. How terribly persistent of you, Harlequin. Why have you come here? Do you intend to intervene now? Uh Something is strange. There he is, standing before me. The man, once known as Hakumin, a hero. But now he fights for his own beliefs, his own form of justice to escape this never-ending cycle of cursed fate. Still, something is not right. Something has shifted. Just as the star has shifted, so has the course of the world. At first... I thought perhaps Kokonoe was responsible. After all, she is the closest to uncovering the truth, and she knows of my efforts to change this cursed world. I thought perhaps she would attempt something. But this? This is not Kokonoe's doing. She could never cause a shift of this magnitude. Then, that would mean... <laughs> you smile. Why? Well, I thought that since I'm here and so are you, perhaps we could play a little. Surely you jest. You are nothing more than a spectator. You would be wise to take your leave. Big words from a clown with no audience. <laughs> a clown, eh? Let us see who between us is truly a clown. Oh yes. Yes, let's do. I believe I would like that very much. It's so like, again, I briefly mentioned this before, but the reason why Hakuman is difficult for people to fight. And I guess this is more for the casual players, I guess the high level players probably know their way around it better, is that like everyone else builds up their heat gauge by getting hit or landing hits. But Hakuman, his heat gauge just perpetually increases on its own, regardless of what you do. So that's why he's able to get off distortion drives even when you're like fighting him a little bit more passively, which is really annoying. Also, he's just freaking strong. Like yesterday when we were doing Rachel's arcade mode to unlock her astral heat, he kept kicking my butt. The will of fate is so I don't think this is gonna go well. Rebel. Unless I got better, which I don't think so. Ah. Okay, I shouldn't fight him up close. Get him, George! Maybe he's easier on story mode, I don't know. Oh, he's still doing damage. Oh, he killed George! George, I think you can you can make George go forward if you still feed him right when he jumps. 
How do I? There we go. Ah, no, I, I should stop playing around. Playtime's over. Come over here, Hakuman. Come over here, Hakuman. Run into my lightning rods. Okay, fine. There we go. Be gone, Harlequin. The stage grows tired of your wooden performance, and your audience has long since departed. Okay, he was he's a lot easier on story mode. I'm not sure if the difficulty level you set in the game actually affects story mode, or if they're like a set story difficulty. Of course, you can adjust arcade mode difficulty too, but I still had it on easy. Or I think I had it on beginner, actually, and he was still kicking my butt. Terrible intervention. A curse upon you, harlot. Uh, uh. It would seem that once again all we can do is watch. <gasps> D, you scared the living crap out of me. Hey there, vampire. Ah, oh, I suppose I should have known. I never had much use for Mr. Arkham, but perhaps I was wrong. If you are here, the ships I've been forced to endure begin to make a modicum of sense. You're pretty sharp for a shitty vampire. <laughs> been doing a little studying? I thought perhaps death would humble you somewhat, but I now see that was a foolish hope. You still have the complexion of a maggot and the face of a worm, I see. Rachel with the insults. Well, there are lots of things I can do because I look like this. Perhaps you would enjoy being a bug. I don't mean to presume, but such an appearance would suit you. I could take pleasure in stomping you. Your insults are so dull. I couldn't even get angry if I tried. Maybe... You should study up on how to insult your opponent. Ugh. You should just sit back and drink your little tea, stupid vampire. Huh? Get it? Understand me? <laughs> Probably not. You're a dumbass, after all. How dare you? Oh, man. I'm getting tired of picking on vampires, so I'm going to head out. See ya. Yeah, they're both so mean to each other. <sighs> Princess? Uh, are you okay? Wow! <laughs> Look at Guy's eye. Uh, he would dare speak to me, to me in such a way. Why, if I could get my hands around his vicious little neck. Oh, I forgot to use Rachel's taunt when I was showing her off in training mode. I'll show you her taunt in the next fight. It's really cute. Eek! M lady, Calm down! Please, calm down! Uh, I don't think I can take much more! <sighs> you sure you want to leave that guy alone? He might be up to no good again. Mm. Okay, so here I have to say... Oh, I shall see. Oh, the pain I will visit upon that man. I will see him beg for death. But we don't even know where he went. We will find him with Kokonoe. I am loath to admit it, but I know him. Then we're going to Sector 7, right? That is correct. If he has not yet gone to Kokonoe, then she must know of his imminent arrival. You there? Hmm? What? How did I not detect you closing in? I need to speak with Kokonoe. You will assist me. Speak with Kokonoe? Who the hell are you? That is none of your concern. Why have you not begun preparations? Preparations? I am referring to your matter transference device. 
<laughs> Give me one reason why I should listen to you. I know that it leads to wherever Kokonoe has hidden herself, and I know that only she can activate it. What? How did you know that? Must I explain everything? Have you never considered that you are the key which activates the device? I'm... the key? Just how much do you know? No, oh dear. This is going nowhere. If you find me a nuisance, why not simply attack me? When you change modes, you will activate the key on this end. What? Yeah, I'm gonna show you Rachel's taunt when I get a chance, because it's kind of cute. The a lot of taunts in the game are kind of boring, but Rebel Rachel's is good. Actually, first, I gotta get Tager away from me. George, keep him busy. George! Okay, let's do taunt. Poor, poor Guy. Ah, okay, I'll fight you now, I'll fight you. Ah, oh, okay, okay, I'll fight you, I'll fight you. Oh, come on. Get electrocuted. This power... What on earth are you? Perhaps you shouldn't have held back, Mechanical Man. If you'd only obeyed me when I first requested your assistance. It... activated? Have we not been over this? This dreadful mess makes it difficult to access her from the outside. How like her. Thank you for your assistance. Until we meet again, Mr. Red Devil. Who the hell is she? Kokonoe, are you gonna be okay? Goodness gracious! How terribly bothersome! Rachel? How did you get in here? Why with the key, of course. Ah, oh, that's right. You can see everything, can't you? If you know that much, surely you've noticed. Yeah, I have. And I tried about a million things, but none of them work. All failures. Indeed. Success comes rarely and never easily. I must congratulate you. You did discover it much faster this time. I see. Then there might be hope for us yet. One can only hope. I believe, however, that task is yours. So it's up to me, who isn't really me. I kind of feel responsible, but at the same time, I don't. Weird. Well, I'd love to stick around and shoot the shit, but I've got places to be, things to do. Oh, I wouldn't dream of keeping you from your important work, but there is one thing I thought you should know. What's that? Your old friend Teremi has returned. What did you say? He's rather close now, I would say. <laughs> Rachel. Oh, you needn't tell me. You would rather I stayed out of this, wouldn't you? Well, I guess you just know it all, don't you? I'm gonna take him down, you just watch! I can't let a bastard like that exist! Then I wish you the best of luck. Perhaps this time around, you will achieve that which you desire. That was all I could do. I am a patron of this play, however unwilling. Not an actor. I may cheer the cast. The stage itself is forbidden to me. At times, I have regretted it. At other times, I have welcomed and accepted my place. But this time, I feel a change of heart. There is hope, the finest of threads, but it is there.
Perhaps even I, a simple member of the audience, can change the play. If only in a small way. Yeah, I'm just a patron, not an actor, as I KO Hakuben and Taker and everyone else. I begin my long walk home with hopes high. Before long, the world will end again, and begin anew. I will sit, and I will watch the seeds I have planted. And perhaps their growth will bring the change my play so desperately needs. After all, what more could a grateful audience ask for? Rachel's Stories Bystander End So that was Rachel's true ending. Now we're going to do her normal endings. So, you saw that there were two branching points, one with Carl and one with Hakuman. So let's do Hakuman's first, which means I have to fight him again. How terribly persistent of you, Harlequin. Why have you come here? Do you intend to intervene now? Uh. Yeah, interesting she doesn't seem to deal at all with New in that story route, huh? Again, it's kind of like because Rachel's supposed to be like a... Like an observer, a bystander, in a way. Instead of directly interfering with certain things. It's kind of due to do with that, I think. Something is strange. There he is, standing before me, the man once known as Hakumin, a hero. But now he fights for his own beliefs, his own form of justice to escape this never-ending cycle of cursed fate. Still, something is not right. Something has shifted. Just as the star has shifted, so has the course of the world. At first, I thought perhaps Kokonoe was responsible. After all, she is the closest to uncovering the truth, and she knows of my efforts to change this cursed world. I thought perhaps she would attempt something, but this, this is not Kokonoe's doing. She could never cause a shift of this magnitude. Then, that would mean... <laughs> you smile. Why? Well, I thought that since I'm here and so are you, perhaps we could play a little. Surely you jest. You are nothing more than a spectator. You would be wise to take your leave. Big words from a clown with no audience. <laughs> a clown, eh? Let us see who between us is truly a clown. Oh yes. Yes, let's do. I believe I would like that very much. I like how concentrated Guy looks in this portrait. He's ready to fight. I also like how his legs are like little sticks too. <laughs> His little belly button. The wheel of fate is turning. Rebel, one, action! George, don't come in. Go down. Don't come in. I'm just gonna range him. I, I can't fight this guy up close. Don't come in. Dang it. Don't come in. Get away from me. Ah, he's... Ow! Oh, I actually stopped his attack. Yeah, get him. Yeah, <laughs> shock him after death. Be gone, Harlequin. The stage grows tired of your wooden performance, and your audience has long since departed. Terrible intervention! A curse upon you, Harlot! <gasps> it would seem that once again all we can do is watch. <gasps> D! You scared the living crap out of me! Hey there, vampire. Ah, oh, I suppose I should have known. I never had much use for Mr. Arkham, but perhaps I was wrong. If you are here, the shifts I've been forced to endure begin to make a modicum of sense. You're pretty sharp for a shitty vampire. <laughs> been doing a little studying? I thought perhaps death would humble you somewhat, but I now see that was a foolish hope. You still have the complexion of a maggot and the face of a worm, I see. 
Well, there are lots of things I can do because I look like this. Perhaps you would enjoy being a bug. I don't mean to presume, but such an appearance would suit you. I could take pleasure in stomping you. Your insults are so dull. I couldn't even get angry if I tried. Maybe you should study up on how to insult your opponent. Ugh. You should just sit back and drink your little tea, stupid vampire. Huh? Get it? Understand me? <laughs> Probably not. You're a dumbass, after all. How dare you? Oh, man. I'm getting tired of picking on vampires. So I'm gonna head out. See ya. I like how this guy, Terumi, appears in Rachel's story and he basically just, like, he looks for her and all he does is come to insult her and then just leave. Like, he doesn't actually do anything. A princess? Uh, are you okay? Wow! Uh, he would dare speak to me, to me in such a way. Why, if I could get my hands around his vicious little neck. Eek! M'lady! Calm down, please, calm down! I don't think I can take much more. <sighs> you sure you want to leave that guy alone? He might be up to no good again. <clears throat> okay, so now, uh, another normal ending of hers is you do, Why should I waste my time on a charlatan like him? Why should I waste my time on a charlatan like him? If that's the case, then I suppose it's okay. I will say this only once. Do not speak of him in my presence again, ever. There will be consequences. I also like how Nago's got that one little, like, blush. <laughs> I won't. Ever. Princess. Somebody's coming. I grow tired of this. Who approaches? Huh? Why the hell are you here? <laughs> Damn you. Is that all? Huh. Plato may have believed the forms were incorporeal and atemporal, but here you are before me, the form of a fool. Shut up! I won't be insulted by someone kicking back in the box seats. <laughs> she, she pulling out the Plato on him. Such vicious accusations. Why the venom, Grim Reaper? I don't believe you're after me. Now you're just asking for it. Fool! The wheel of fate is turning. Oh yeah, the good music. Rachel versus Ragna theme. Why is he guarding everything? It's not fair. Hit him with a fist. Why, you... What the hell was... Why do you hold back? Huh? You still don't understand. Even after so many repetitions, don't you see that your lack of conviction dooms this world to oblivion? Uh, hey, what the heck are you talking about? I have no clue what's going on. Why are you fighting? Why are you living? Why were you born? You're here only to destroy the world, aren't you? To end it all. 
I was just... <laughs> the time has already come. You. What? What's with you? You're creeping me out ra Not now. Listen to me. Never admit defeat. Endure whatever pain you may face. And fight until your last breath as a human being. Even if you are ugly and pathetic and broken. Rachel. Please, Ragnar. That's what I was planning to do anyway. <laughs> so this is the climax, huh? All right, bring it on. I am dreaming a terribly long dream, one with no end. It matters not how I struggle to wake myself from the dream. It is futile. Perhaps it is time to give up. Give up and forget about life outside this dream. It would appear I have failed once again. How many times have I been here, in this very spot? The entrance to the dream from which I can never wake. The doors of the abyss. And here I am, again. Everything the way it was. Joel. A voice. This. This voice. Rachel. Sorry. And thanks. Yes. Are you awake, milady? Yes. In fact, I feel quite refreshed. Do you indeed? In that case, I shall prepare the most exquisite tea before you have returned to your customary foul temper. An excellent idea, Valkenhayn. Would you be so kind as to bring it to me in the courtyard? I shall be waiting. Of course, madam. The moon is quite beautiful tonight. The alternate truth is yet to be found. I have to say, I love the dynamic between Rachel and Ragna. It's such a unique dynamic, and I love the way it's written. Like, a lot of people might be like, oh, Rachel just has characteristics of being Sundere, which I can understand, but like, I don't like very stereotypical depictions of Sundere, like the ones where it's like, I don't really like you, Baka, like that kind of it's like stereotypical writing. I don't really like that, but the way that Rachel goes about it, I really, really enjoy it. Like the way she's like so crass and insulting, looks down on everybody, but then she has these moments of like, you could see her real like being gentle towards Ragna and really like fighting for, I guess, for lack of a better term, kind of escaping this dream, this sort of like time loop thing that I'm sure you can kind of see going on as the story takes place. Like I really like it. And the fact that, you know, Rachel's like an all powerful being but then her, her role in the story is because she's like an observer, which is kind of explained more later, is a good limiter on her abilities. Because otherwise Rachel's... In the story, she's kind of OP, she's kind of overpowered, but then she has this restriction that kind of relegates her to this role that still plays out very well for someone who's very powerful. So, I don't know, I really like it. Ragnar and Rachel is one of my favorite, like, dynamics in, in the game, and... Like, Rachel's one of my favorite characters, and I really, really like Ragnar as a as a main hero, so anyways, you'll hear me talk about them a lot. Uh, so the next branching path for Rachel is from Carl. So we're gonna go back and beat up Carl again. How barren. How did we end up here? I guess even you can make some mistakes, princess. <laughs> oh! Pr princess! Someone's coming! I have eyes, Guy. Now shut your ugly mouth before I remove it from your face. Hello there, child. How do you do? Are you a witch? You came out of nowhere. Wonder how that feels, being an observer to something you can't prevent, or to something you can prevent, right? It's such an interesting idea. And, yeah, I really like it. The way the story is written in Blaze Blue is very interesting. I love the world of Blaze Blue. It's really cool. I beg your pardon? 
Clearly, those ostentatious eyeglasses do your eyes no good. Perhaps they would serve you better forcibly inserted into your mouth. What do you think, sis? About this person? Uh, sis, what's the matter? Milady, the guy's talking to a puppet. I think we should keep on walking. Still depending on your sister at your age. How pitifully sad. How dreadfully irritating. Dangerous? You're saying that person is dangerous? Yeah, and she's like basically immortal too, being a vampire and stuff too. So it's like she's watching this happen over and over and over and over again. Who in the world are you? This has never happened before. Sis is reacting to someone other than myself. Have you ever heard of the word manners? Inquiring about a lady's nature is not only rude, it is the very height of impropriety. You're dangerous. I'm not really sure why, but you're a dangerous individual. My sister said so. The wheel of fate is turning. Rebel, one, action! George, the third, don't come near me. Don't come near me. George, the third, George, the third. Don't underestimate me. I always forget to make use of Sylphid. Sis! Ha! You mean you thought you stood a chance against the princess? What should we do with this boy, milady? Let's see. Okay, so for this, I have to do... I think he requires a lesson in manners. You are still in rather dire need of manners. Perhaps you would like to beg for mercy. Is that what you would like to do, you spoiled brat? Uh, uh, uh. How shall I punish you? <laughs> you have no idea what the princess is capable of. Halt right there! A man of love and justice, Bang Shishigami arrives! I have been watching from afar, but how can you lay a finger on a man who is already down? And you call yourself a warrior? That young man is my cute little disciple. I, Bang Shishigami, cannot overlook this. Who? I just said I'm Bang Shishigami! <laughs> This matter does not concern you. I suggest you leave. But I just told you that boy is my apprentice. You will excuse me if I find it difficult to believe this unsullied child would associate with a man such as yourself. That's not true. He's also a vigilante like myself. Besides, the kinds of fights vigilantes get involved in are very limited. Which leads me to believe that you have done something terrible. You cannot fool me with your appearance. Now, fight fair and square. <laughs> Nago, Guy, let's go. All righty. Milady, are we just leaving him? You have failed to pique my curiosity, and I do not much care for sweaty men. Hmm? So you choose to run? You coward! This conversation is over. Now we're going to jump from here straight to the cauldron. I won't let you! Do I not even fight Bang? <laughs> or did he run into my teleporter? Oh, he ran into my teleporter. <laughs> oh dear. What is this place? Looks like we messed up. Oh dear. It would seem we are not where we should be. <sighs> you disgust me. <laughs> I like how Bang... <laughs> is also like not afraid to fight a little girl when he sees something wrong happening. He's just like, I'm gonna fight this girl and teach her a lesson. Oh, please! Hmm? What am I doing here? Could this be the warp I've heard about? In my years of rigorous training, I never would have imagined I would get to see this day, to experience a space-time jump with my very own eyes. What? D don't tell me. Are you the one who did this? 
Could you be a top-class vigilante? It is almost unbelievable that a small child such as yourself can be a true master of the art. However, the saying does go, don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, bang, never change. <laughs> then, could she be the descendant of a master? It's possible. If she's been trained by masters from a young age, then it's entirely possible. Uh... <clears throat> oh, I suppose your departure was too much to hope for. I humbly apologize for my impudence earlier. Although I was unaware of who you were, my attitude was inexcusable. Gee, I require more crumpets. Roger that! Hmm... The perfect atmosphere for a nap, no? But I must question what you were doing to my cute little disciple. Perhaps he insulted you in some manner? Nonetheless, that could be a youthful mistake, and it was by no means his true intent. That is what I would like to believe. Gee, would you be so kind as to adjust the mirror upward? You said it! Too high. S sorry. Rachel also has really good pre-fight animations and end-fight animations. We saw it when we did her, her arcade mode, but uh, like I love when she she'll start the fight like drinking tea with like a table and using Nago as her chair and Gi is like holding her teapot and then they'll turn back into her weapons or she'll she'll pop out of a a portal out of nowhere and then step on Nago as he turns into a set of stairs. Yeah, I love how she's just ignoring Bang. I'm afraid that is insufficient. Your punishment will be forthcoming. Th that's too much. Which is why, no matter how good of an education you receive, or how well off your family is, you cannot look down on others. Not to mention, both you and Carl are but children. You must not resolve your differences with your fists. My lady, it hurts. It hurts! No more, please! Now goes just sleeping. And that's the case. Do you understand now? I take a moment to consider what the creature has said. If I remember correctly, this man too carries a Nox Nictoris. I would very much like to simply ignore the pestilent creature in front of me. I attend to other more important matters, but if he was chosen by a Nox class weapon, then he too must have an important role in this play. You. What is it? Then again. Huh? <laughs> Just straight into the fight. So again, you can see like Rachel's crest looks like a rose and Bangs looks like a nail. No, oh, I have no regrets. The only dangerous thing about you is your prodigious stench. Any fool armed with so much as a clothespin would have little trouble defeating you. <laughs> Her insults are just so unique, too. Nago, Guy, let us take our leave of this disgusting spectacle. You got it. Milady, where are you going? Let's see. She's so savage. Oh, oh, Miss Lychee, let me handle this one. Oh dear. It would seem we are not where we should be. Perhaps it is due to the strange interference. A princess? What are we gonna do? For the moment, I'm afraid there is little we can do, except take this opportunity to enjoy a cup of tea. Sounds good. Gee, the princess has requested a cup of tea! We literally just had tea. <laughs> hmm? Gee? Here! I'm right here! 
Gee! <laughs> what is that thing? A vulgar creature of lower orders. It is rather filthy. Take care not to touch it. Princess! Help me, please! I'm getting eaten! I like how Arakune's, like, in this portrait, he's kind of, like, got, like, a long, snaking tail that winds around. But for some reason, because of the way it's broken up by the text box, I can't help but see it as two legs. Like, as if he's, like, sitting cross-legged and, like, hovering a little bit. It sounds like her warp is being interfered with, but you laugh so hard if she had an awful sense of direction. <laughs> yeah, minor inconvenience happens. Let us indulge with tea. Uh, there's actually a character in the Blaze Blue series later that one of their defining character traits is their lack of direction. But uh, they don't appear until a later game, so look forward to that. He, he ate him? Gee, no! Princess, it's dark in here. I'm scared. I love Guy's voice, too. He's so cute, but also, like... <laughs> Just taste that. Should be master instead. Ugh, I'm all sticky. What a filthy insect. You have defiled my familiar. Must I show you your proper place? I do fear, but you have a problem with that I shall indulge you. Your hubris suggests a resistance to discipline, insect. Nevertheless, perhaps I will manage to teach you some manners. Yeah, Arcadian's voice is cool. He's such a unique character. I love his animations, too. Him along with Rachel. Like, he has amazing animations that you wouldn't be able to get in, like, a 3D game. I would love to see a 3D Blaze Blue, though. Just, like... Guilty Gear has gone 3D. See, he doesn't have a, a silhouette when he gets electrocuted. Ow. Oh, for some reason I'm trying to do Sword Iris. There we go. For some reason the input just wasn't reading. Ah. <laughs> yeah, she looks like she's really annoying to fight against. Yeah, Ar Arakuni's weird like pelvic thrust moves. Uh, yeah, he's got it's not it's not a binding thing. Basically, what Arakuni does is if he hits you with certain moves, he like curses you, and then it makes it so that all his attacks get additional like insects that come on the screen and attack you and adds extra hits. It's really it's a really interesting mechanic. Looks like he's trying to run. Princess, are you just gonna let him go? I care not. I do not wish to be in the company of that thing any longer than is absolutely necessary. I'm still trying to overcome my trauma. Now poor Guy. Guy, you will remain at least five yards from me at all times until you've been cleansed of that filth. Perhaps you should remain downwind as well. Should I catch a whiff of your odious coating, I believe you know what will follow. <laughs> Add insult to injury, eh? Oh. And that goes for me, too. Everyone's so... cold. <sighs> I've developed reservations in regards to pressing forward. The shifts I've seen are far too great, and I fear it is too late for the resolution I hope for to come to fruition. Therefore, I believe that this time, I will merely watch. And if, by chance, a new shift comes into being, I'll use every ounce of power under my command to help this world collapse. My goodness. Uh, 
It would seem I have at least caught up with you. Ah, Falkenhayn. I think perhaps it is time the young madam called it a night, this time around. An excellent suggestion. It would be best if we were to retire. Very well. I shall desire tea when we return. You will prepare it, and then we shall wait. After all, we have all the time in the world. I'm rather tired, but I suppose this time away from the drudgery of the castle has done me good. No play retains its drama in repetition. <sighs> Falkenhayn, if Father could see the world as it is now, what would he think? I do not quite know how I should answer that question, madam. I have been plagued by doubt of late, Falkenhayn. Do you? Do you think I belong at the head of this family, as the inheritor of this mansion? You will forgive my impertinence, my lady, but such a question seems out of character. Is that so? No, I suppose you are right. Perhaps I am simply tired. Do you wish to retire to the bedchamber? I shall have it made up. Let me stay here a little longer. Even if I fall asleep, I should like to stay here a little longer. Very well then, madam. I shall bring you a blanket. <laughs> I hope Guy got his shower. Yeah, poor Guy. Yes. Please. <sighs> oh, this is such a cute picture. Oh, look at Guy. He's all stuffed. Ah, sir. If you could only see your daughter now. Your Rachel has grown so much. The alternate truth is yet to be found. Perfect, so that's Rachel's story, aside from all the game overs and losing screens. So that means next time we'll be tackling Tao, and then Tager, and then we'll move on to Laichi and Arakune. So, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned for more Blaze Blue as the videos get uploaded, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!